Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Agbona, and this is David Agbona Ministries, our prayer service, which we do have every first day of the week. I welcome every one of you to this service. I want you to stay on till the end. You are going to be greatly blessed. Today's teaching is going to be God's battle axe. God's battle axe. You are God's battle axe. The Bible says you are God's battle axe. You are going to understand how you are God's battle axe and what God expects of you being his battle axe. I welcome you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are joining from. We are going to have a few minutes of prayer. Thereafter, we would have some worship, and then I will be teaching um, on the topic, God's Battle Act. Then we are going to take our communion and our anointing oil will be blessed. So stay on. I want you to invite people to join you. Please do share this video and let's begin. Let's thank the Lord for making us see the day. Let us give him thanks for this day. The Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's the protocol. We enter with thanksgiving. We begin everything with thanksgiving because he is our God. Thank him that you are alive. Thank him that you see this day. Our God is good and his mercies endures forever. I want you to praise him. Lord, we thank you. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, O God. We praise you. Your mercy endures forever. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we see today. Our eyes see this day. Our ears hear your words today, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus that we are able to participate in the services, in the service of today. Oh God, we praise you for you are wonderful. You are the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. Lord, you are faithful and true, but kind. There is forgiveness of sins with you. Therefore is your name greatly praised. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I want you to conf- let go of every offense. You may be angry with someone. Someone might have hurt you. I want you to let go. Let it go. Let it go. Ask the Lord to heal you of every hurt and declare your forgiveness upon anyone who has hurt you. Just forgive that person and let go of every offense. And as you do so, I want you to ask the Lord to forgive your own sins. Jesus said, if you forgive, you will be forgiven. So it is a prerequisite for forgiveness, for you being forgiven that you forgive others. It's a prerequisite. So I want you to forgive your sins now asking the Lord to have mercy upon you. Confess your sins and ask him to have mercy upon you. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Oh Lord, we confess our sins. The sins of anger, bitterness, lust, unbelief, rebellion, immoralities of various kinds, anger, wrath, bitterness. Lord, have mercy on your people. We ask, Lord, that you cleanse us 
and purge us of those sins with the blood of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. You will take up your throne, O Lord God, deep within our heart. And of the increase of your government, there shall be no end. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we pray that you, O God, will be present wherever this service is participated in. Whichever nation, town, city, village, we ask, Lord, for your presence. We pray, Lord, that you will stretch forth your hands to save, heal, and deliver. And that signs and wonders will be done in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, you will frustrate every attempt to restrict and hinder this service. We pray in the name of Jesus. And we bind every demonic force, every evil spirit and wicked spirit that will try to stop the service, that will try to restrict the spread of this service and the activities in this service. We bind them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray people will be healed as they participate in this service. And those they are praying for will be healed, saved, and delivered. We thank you, Lord. May the blessings of this service go beyond the immediate participants. We pray, Lord, that you will take your call, touch our lips, and send us. Like you did Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. Amen. I welcome everyone watching on YouTube, on Facebook, and other social media uh, social media handles. I thank you for joining. Good morning to every one of you. Good afternoon to those who are watching in the afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are, God bless you. I thank you for joining, and I want you to stay on till the end. Today's teaching is God's battle axe. God's battle axe. God has a battle axe. God has a weapon of war. We are going to see who or what that weapon of war is. We are going to have a few minutes of worship, and thereafter, I will return for the teaching. Rosemary, my wife, is going to take us in some minutes of worship, and then I will be back. Please do share this video. God bless you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad indeed. This is the day, the glorious day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in thee and be glad in thee this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in thee this is the day the glorious day that the lord has made this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has 
made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in thee, and be glad in thee. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in thee. This is the day, the glorious day that the Lord has me the joy of the Lord is my strength 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 the joy of the Lord my strength, the joy of the Lord is 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 my strength. The the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I test no more. He gives me living waters and I test no more. He gives me living waters and I test no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 The joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Oh, So now we'll begin the teaching. I welcome every one of you. This is David Aigbona Ministries, and I am David Aigbona. We are going to be studying the Word of God. The topic is God's Battle Acts. We are going to read Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Please do share share uh, this video. Jeremiah chapter fifty one, verse twenty. Okay, come when you are ready. Okay, Benjamin will be reading for us. 
from this way. Okay, Benja, do your stuff. That's my battle axe and the point of war. For with thee, I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee, I will destroy the kingdoms. Hallelujah. He read from the King James Version. I actually recommend the King James Version, not the New King James Version. King James Version, because the Basic Bible, the New International Version, and others are not really Bibles. They are altered. The messages are altered. The statements are altered. Some verses of scriptures have been removed. So, especially the message Bible is a New Age book. So I actually recommend that people stay away. Don't even have it with you. That message by the same age book. There are lots of altered st uh, statements there. So stick to the King James anyway. So God has made a statement. It says that we are his battle axe. We are his battle axe. With us, he will make war. You see, God's family is also his army. God's family is his army. And God has given the earth to the sons of men. God has given the earth to the sons of men. When I mean sons, I'm not referring to gender. I mean humanity. He has given the earth to humanity. He has given humans the authority to do things on earth. God works on earth through us. He uses us. He does what he wants to do. He fulfills his plans through you and I. He fulfills his plans through us. And so I want you to be aware that you have a unique role in the fulfillment of God's will on earth. Every one of us has a unique role in the fulfillment of God's plan on earth. God pays attention to detail. He pays attention to detail. God strategizes. God is never reactive. He's proactive. He knew that Adam would sin. That is why he mentioned the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of life. Because he knew that Satan was listening to get Adam to disobey. So he allowed Adam to disobey in a manner that Adam could be redeemed. If Adam, Shalom, if Adam had eaten of the tree of life, he would have been eternally damned. God knew that Adam and Eve would make that mistake. And so he mentioned the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because Satan is a resistor. Satan is a resistor, slander. He is against. He is contrary. So if God says jump, Satan is going to don't jump. If God says don't jump, Satan will say jump. So when God said the tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't it, Satan told Adam, Go eat of that tree. By eating of that tree, Adam and the entire mankind sinned, but were redeemable. And that is why immediately Adam sinned. God pushed got him out of the garden and sent angels and a flaming sword to surround the tree of life. The Bible says that we shall all eat the tree of life when we stand before Jesus Christ, when Jesus receives us, he will give us of that tree of life. So God had the plan 
for Adam to have that tree of that tree, but at the appointed time. So each of us believers in Christ Jesus, who is faithful to the earth, will be granted to eat from the tree of life. God is never reactive. He is ever proactive. He acts ahead of time. He does not react. You should understand, if God does not react, God has seen what is coming. God has seen the challenges ahead. And God has sent the solution ahead. God has seen the challenges ahead and he has sent the solution ahead. There is a need that you are created to fulfill. There is a need you and I are created to fulfill. There is a need. There is a plan for each and every one of you and myself too. God planned you before he made you. God did not plan, did not make you and then copy a plan from another person's fire. God planned you and then created you, sent you even through that abusive family. Through that peaceful, loving family. Whichever your situation was at birth and in youth, growing up, God planned it to the very last detail, intending that whatsoever you go through will take you to your destiny. Whatsoever you go through will take you to your destiny. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. It does not mean that God desired you to go through what you went through. No. But he prepared a way of escape for you. And also prepared things to work for your good. That whatever happens in your life will not destroy you, but strengthen you. God planned it. You are not a copy. You are an original. God paid attention to your height, to your size, to your skin color, everything about you is prepared to fulfill your destiny. So don't mock yourself by your height, your size, and your outward appearance. Everything about you is strategically planned by God. It doesn't mean if you are not taking care of your body the way you should, that that is God's will. But if you keep doing what you should do, if you are taking good care of your body, it is God's will for you to be how you are. And if you have not been taking care of your body, you don't you don't smack yourself like it. Just start doing the right thing. Start taking care of your body and ask God to help you. Because I have heard people say that because they are black, 
That is why things are not working out for them. I don't believe that. I believe that you may encounter difficulties both with the God of heaven and earth with you, irrespective of your skin color, you will succeed. I want to show you a scripture that proves how God pays attention to you, to every detail about your life. God pays attention to every detail about you. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 10. And you are going to see it. Matthew chapter 10. There is nothing about you that God does not know. God has a clear record of everything about you. A very clear record. Accurate record. Detailed record of everything about you. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 10 verse 30. We want to read. Okay, come quick. Okay. But the very ends of your head are all numbered. Exactly. Do you know it took me a long time to actually figure this out? God pays that much attention to my detail that even the hair on my head is numbered. He has a record. So those of you who are complaining that you are getting bald or getting gray. God has an accurate record of the hair that is falling off your head. God has an accurate record of the very hair falling off your head. Is that sweet? He has the accurate record of the hair on your head. If he has accurate records of the hair on your head at all times, What do you think he has record of apart from that? Everything about you. He has a record of everything about you. And God pays attention to your cry. When you are alone, crying out to God, he's listening. When you are looking at yourself, and complaining that you are getting old. The angels in heaven are saying, she's coming home soon. He's coming home soon. Let's get her mansion ready. Let's get his mansion ready. Never mourn your age. Celebrate your age. Because in heaven, they are looking forward to coming. It's like you're expecting someone to come home. You look at the time, you're excited. My son will soon be back on school. I need to get his lunch ready. God is looking at time. Ah, soon he will be with me. She will be with me. And then we will celebrate together. So don't cry over your age. Don't mourn over your age. Don't despise your grain. The Bible says precious in the sight of God is the death of his sins. It's precious to him because he's receiving those he loves. While you are in this earthly body, there's a limit to which God can communicate with you. But when you leave this body, Jesus can hold your hand and walk around with you. He's looking forward to that. So never despise your age. Never despise your age. Never. God is looking forward to meeting you. Let's look at Psalm 147, verse 4. Some of you do not know that God discusses you. The Father discusses you with Jesus. He discusses you with the angels. God discusses you. You see, who am I that 
God will mention my name. He knows you. He knows everything about you. Psalm 147 verse 4. It says, He tells the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. It is believed that there are billions of stars. The Bible says God knows the number of the stars. And he calls each individual star by name. Each star has a name. Isn't that amazing? Each one. Each star has a name. You are that precious in the sight of God. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. You know, I showed you that even the hell in your head, that irrelevant detail to you is very relevant to God. So you can't go bald without God knowing. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, who has created these things, that brings out their host by number. He calls them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power. Not one fails. Now the Bible is saying that the entire host of God's creation, everything he has created, he calls them by name. By name. He calls the angels by name. He calls you by name. He calls everything by name. He knows he has an individual, a personal relationship. A personal um, knowledge of everything, everyone. He knows each and every one of you. He has your record. He knows everything about you. And he is watching you. The Bible says it's because of the greatness of his might. Our God is so mighty that he knows all these things. He is so mighty. He knows everything about you. God sees you as his battle axe. He will do things through you. You are the one that manifests his presence. It is through you that his will will be done. You are an answer to a problem. You, is, you are a solution to a problem. You are a blessing to this world. Being his battle axe, he is destroying the works of the devil through you. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible also says, Jesus being quoted, As the Father sent me, so send I you. So for this purpose, have you manifested to destroy the works of the evil one? You are on earth. To destroy the works of the evil one, to set the captives free, to do great exploits, to show forth the goodness of God. God has chosen you and I to show forth his mercy. Angels in heaven, they love to look at these things. It's a mystery. God manifested. God is being manifested through you and through me. And that is why we should maintain a good relationship with him. The Bible says, acquaint now yourself with him. Acquaint now yourself with him. Get familiar with him. Each and every one of us is growing. We are a work in progress. We are growing in faith. We stumble, but we get up. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times and get back up again. 
So you may fall several times. The important thing is that you get back up. Being a righteous woman, a righteous man, when you fall, you get back up. You get back up again. Through you, God will do exploits. Through you, God is going to heal. He's going to save. He's going to deliver. And he will do it to the extent you are willing to be used by him. God will not force himself on you, but he will walk with your willingness. To the extent you yield yourself to him, to that extent you become his weapon of war to destroy the works of the evil one. I want to tell you a story. This actually happened in uh, the city where I live. Many years ago, the great apostle Benson Idahosa, he was then uh, pastoring in Benin, and there was another fellow who was who came, who were claimed to be the leader of the witches. And the man announced that there was a witch, a witch's convention to be held in Benin City. A witch's convention. World witch's convention, not local, world. Witches were coming from various nations. They would fly into Nigeria physically. Those who uh, would fly physically and those who come spiritually would come spiritually. So people would come physically spiritual to Benin City for a witches conference. And then Ben Sinidau said it's not happening. He went on television and announced that that convention is not holding where he is. And then the TV station went to meet the chairman of the witches. In real life, it happened in the 80s. Yeah, 80s or 70s. And they went to the chairman of the witches and the chairman of the witches said, God will not stop it. It is going to happen. And then the uh, TV station journalists or reporters went to Archbishop Benson Idausa and asked him, look at what this man says. He says God will not stop it. That is going to hold. Because wherever there is a witness convention, there is going to be bloodshed, accidents, sicknesses. Benson Idausa said, when they asked him, this man said, God will not stop it. Idausa said, it's true. And he said, you, 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 are, you are saying that God will not stop it? He said, yes. God will not stop it. Why should God stop it when I'm here? What am I here for? I don't know will stop it. <laughs> and then they set up an interview on TV. The chief witch, Benson Idausa, and in the course of the interview, basically the answer asked the man, he said, with all your hosting, I'm going to ask you just one question. Are you a witch? He said, why are you asking? He said, if you, if you say you are a witch, you will fall down dead here. And the man said, no, I'm a witch, I'm not a witch. He gave up. After the interview, the man went out boasting. That it was the thing we hold. It also said, well, since this man didn't have the courage to disclose, I think he was a witch in my presence. He's not holding. The testimony is things went wrong for the witches. They couldn't come to Benin City. They moved the World Witches Conference to South Africa. And the military head of state, the dictator at that time, invited Archbishop Idausa and told that Bishop Idausa that he watched that interview. He was aware of the witches' conference, the witches' conference going to hold in Benin. He watched it, and when he saw that Idausa was so confident, he gave an order to all the embassies, Nigerian embassies around the world, that they should not issue visas to anyone coming for that conference in Benin.
state was encouraged that okay, he has a backup and said he gave that instruction that anyone claiming to come for a conference in Benin <laughs> for that witchcraft conference should not be granted visas. Things were bad for the witches convention. They had to move out to South Africa. God I want everyone right now, I want everyone right now to, to pray. I want you to pray and ask God to fill with his Holy Spirit and power. Talk to him. Talk to him. And if you are not born again, this is a time to give your heart to Jesus Christ. This is a time to give your heart to Jesus Christ. I want you to ask the Lord to come to your heart and have mercy on you. Ask him to have mercy on you. 
Ask him to have mercy on you. Tell him you give your heart to him. From now on, you are. I want you to ask the Lord for you. Ask him to write your name in his book of life. I want you to accept and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The rest of you, I want you to pray and ask the Lord to give you boldness and determination. Talk to him right now. Lord, we thank you for your word. The entrance of your word gives life and light. We ask Lord God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. We're going to take our communion bread right now. Remember, you are God's battle axe. You are in a tool in his hands to bring forth deliverance. Lift up your bread. Lord, we thank you for the bread lifted up. We thank you. We ask that you turn this ordinary bread into the body of Jesus Christ in us. We pray that everything lacking in our lives will be restored. Everything sick and damaged will be healed. We pray, Lord God, that even as we eat this bread, we, we, O God, will receive from you new organs, new body parts, fresh, uh, fresh glands. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bread, you break it. You take juice. If you don't feel this, you can use water. Lord, we thank you for the contents of the cups lifted unto you. We ask, Lord, you turn this drink in our hands into the blood of Jesus in us. Let the life of Christ reign in us supreme. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You take your anointing oil. I want you to give God thanks for your anointing oil. The oil has its significance. Lord, we thank you for every oil lifted up unto you. We ask that you please turn this ordinary anointing, ordinary oil into holy anointing oil. And we pray, Lord God, that you fill the oil with your fire and power. That everyone anointed will be protected from danger. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. And we pray, Lord, that on the items representing people, clothing, pictures that will be touched with this oil, we pray that your power will locate those people and intervene in their situations to bring forth the desired outcome according to your will. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You take it. Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. The Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. The Bible says, if there be any sick amongst you, you should be anointed with oil by the elders, and he will recover. The Bible says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. The yoke is a chain, a, a collar used to hold slaves and animals. Hold them. It will be broken. I thank you for participating in this service. Thank you for sharing this video. Please do share it. Send it to people in need. I am on YouTube, on gab.com, on Brighton, on Facebook. You can find me there. On YouTube, Gab, and Brighton, it is David Eidmona Ministries. On Facebook, it is either at David Eidmona 2. If you just click at David Eidmona 2, you will locate me or David Eidmona Ministries too. That's the name of the page. And probably with time, we will expand more to other social media sites. 
So thank you for joining. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.